Diyarbakir, the sprawling capital of Kurdish southeast Turkey. It's a day's journey from London via Istanbul and is the starting point for poor families desperate to quit grinding poverty for prosperity in the West. Tulay Goren's journey of hope had started even further out, a six-hour drive on rough roads in the heart of primitive countryside. She's seen here with her father in the village posing proudly for the camera. Little Tulai is in the blue top at the front, smiling happily with the other children. A snapshot of their lives before Tulai's father made the decision to move the family from their remote village, where we tracked down 79-year-old Juma Goren, the uncle of Tulai's father, Mehmet. I cannot really believe that he could do something like this. So, uh, if I ask you, would you be able to kill your daughter? You have a conscience, you have a heart. How can you do that? This is something uh, not possible to kill your own daughter. But this cuts to the very core of the tragic story of Tulai Goran. Her family left their poverty behind, but they took ancient and ultimately fatal customs and traditions with them from here to Woodford Green. There's an eerie quiet about the village of Kosei Yahya. Where have all the people gone? Well, just like Tulai and her family all those years ago, they have left for a better life in London and in many other cities around the world. The irony is not lost that her quest for a better life ultimately led to her death. Honour killings, girls and young women murdered because their behaviour, whether true or merely suspected, is seen to have damaged the family's reputation. They're not confined to Turkey, but in this country alone in one year there were 220 killings in both country areas and cities. 94 because of alleged affairs, 71 after women had attracted attention from men, even if it was unwanted, and 17 because they had been raped. Mere rumour and gossip can be a death sentence. Wearing trousers and even calling a radio station to request a song are said to be enough to warrant killing a woman. Why? Civil rights groups here accuse a male-dominated society in which men can treat women as they please. Others blame religion. But after interviewing many Turkish honour killers in prison, one eminent professor concluded Islam and the Koran didn't drive them to murder. I'm not sure that the, to make a connection between the, uh, uh, the religion and the honor killing. This is more uh, traditional custom. This, this is not uh, uh, religion, in my opinion. In the tea shops where men gather to talk of politics and religion, honor killing is a touchy subject. But a senior member of one mosque agreed to speak, telling me that Islam says if a couple commit adultery and they are married, both should be killed by the state, not an individual. If not married, they should both be whipped. Society, he says, not religion, causes men in his community to condemn women to death. If he were such a man and he moved to London, I asked, would he still kill in the name of honour? If I go to London, I will still be the same person, I will have still the same mind. If my daughter do the same thing over there, I will kill her over there. <laughs> This is the age of innocence, where boys play as equals with girls until centuries-old tradition can set brother against sister in pitiless violence. This is Saime, still mourning the loss of her 16-year-old daughter Kader, killed by the hand of her 17-year-old brother Ahmed. With her died her unborn child. She was six and a half months pregnant. She was a very nice girl. She wouldn't say, buy me this, buy me that. She would eat anything you gave her. She didn't want to go out. She begged me to let her smoke. She said, we have nothing. Let me smoke. Ahmed saw a man running across these roofs. He'd come out of the family's house. Ahmed chased him away. It's almost certain that Kader had been raped. The boy was put under intolerable pressure to punish his sister for what had happened. He was sitting in a cafe. A boy said, I did this to your sister. Why don't you do something? He was very angry and wanted to kill the boy. But in his anger, he killed his sister. I don't know who else put pressure on him. 
Doctors couldn't save Kader after her brother attacked her with a meat cleaver. Her funeral led to impassioned pleas for a break with a cruel tradition of the past. Every member of this family continues to be touched by this tragedy, not least of all the killer, Ahmed. He's said to be devastated and psychologically damaged by what he did. He begged his mother to be allowed to be buried here with his sister, but she says that is something that she cannot allow. She prays that her grandson will witness the end of a centuries-old practice that tears families apart in Turkey, one that is only just beginning in London. Phil Bales, London Tonight, Diyarbakir in Southeast Turkey.